I saw Hi, fans. The, the most worried person in the audience who kept looking at his watch saying, am I going to get on? Am I going to get on? It's been a long show, but this is just a thrill knowing that Cotton Seed Clark is still alive. <laughs> that is, that's right. Thanks, Russ. Well, that's some information that we need to yeah. get. I'd, I'd ask you for a funny story, but you have so many. There are so many. Would you like to tell one? Not really. I didn't think so. I saw... No, I just come here to say that it's, it's, I got my roots here working uh -huh. with all these shows, and I'm doing well now. I now have a home on both coasts, one in Tijuana, one in Newark. <laughs> and, um, I just, it's, I worked with you. Yeah. I worked with you and Don Sherwood and, yeah. uh, and how, man, Russ Cobb. How many times have we stood in front of a television camera and done an interview and laughed in each other's faces? <laughs> right? <laughs> Including tonight? <laughs> that's, yeah, right, that's right. Okay. Uh, how many phone calls did you make to get on this show, Ronnie? Twelve. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I I know, I know I got eight of them at home myself. And you're giving me about 20 seconds. No, you can have more time at the party afterwards. Everyone will remember you yeah, because you're on the television all the time. You are, and yes, you show up. The night you saw Cotton Seed Clark come to life, and <laughs> <laughs> Russ Coughlin died <laughs> at the same time. Here we are. I gotta okay. go, folks. We're a little No, you don't. Know. <laughs> you stay right. You stay right here. Okay. Right show. Happy 40th anniversary, Channel 7. <laughs> you know, a great deal of what those of us in television do for a living comes, it always comes kind of wrapped in kind of a gesture's cap and bells, but we have, have you thought about it? You've gone into space with our astronauts. You've seen a man walk on the moon. And you've, have you been beneath the sea with Jacques Cousteau? And have you attended a live political convention? Or have you cheered an Olympic champion right at his moment, her moment of victory? If your answer is yes, television has stretched your world and it stretched your life. In September 1950, KGO-TV and the California Academy of Sciences got together for the first local program to explain each week the world of science. It was broadcast live every Thursday, first with host Tom Grudy, then with Dr. Earl Harold, and that was a hit. I should say our animals of the week because they are Mexican jumping beings and they come from the state of Sonora, in this part of Mexico. Here's El Paso, the Gulf, Lower California. And if, in your, if you are in Mexico, then you call them Brincadores Mexicanos. Notice these little fellows. You can see how some of them are more active than the others. Now, their movement is dependent upon the amount of heat that's present. The maximum jump that one of these has ever made has been some seven inches. <laughs> Come on, you got to understand in this age of space-age technology, these revelations may seem a little less than earth-shaking, but, hey, in the 1950s, a jumping beam was a big deal, and even our own TV systems, as primitive as they were, seemed really magical, even to us who worked in them. One of the most successful programs of its time was fittingly called Success Story, and each week, they went to a different industry or laboratory, and they explained how it worked. There was no tape, no film. Even back then, it was all done live. Okay, let's stand by for air. It's five Little seconds. Show. Four, three, two, one. Up on one and cue music. Stand by for super on two. Like two. And super two, cue narrator. Success story. And on the spot live telecast from selected locations in the greater San Francisco Bay Area is brought to you each week as a public service by the Richfield Oil Corporation. For several months now, We've been wondering just what kind of a show to do for our anniversary program. So you wonder how we do it. Well, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, many times we wonder ourselves. I hope that we've all met before on previous success stories. My name is Bob Day. And here he is, Bob Day. Bob Day, here we are. A few years later. Thank you, Bob. asking ourselves that same question. You know, it's about a half hour ago. Tell me some of the things that happened in that show. At All Lives, something had to happen every time you did it. Well, the, one of the big things of the show was the interview with the people in the plant. And one time we were doing Mother's Cake and Cookies over in San Leandro. Uh -huh. And uh, the interviews weren't scripted, but they were set up. In other words, I discussed with a man what I was going to ask him. So I was settled that I would ask him what the production of the plant was. He would tell me they put out $9 million worth of baked goods a month. And then I would ask him what was the distribution. He would tell me the western states in Alaska and Hawaii, which of course weren't states then. So fine, the show went along fine, and I got into the interview with this man. And I said, you know, we're very much impressed with the machinery we've seen here. And uh, what is the production of this plant? He said, well, Mr. Day, he said, in a month's time, we will produce in excess of $9 million worth of baked goods. And I registered a maintenance. I said, that's an ast astronomical figure. Tell me, Mr. Wheatley, where do all these baked goods go? And look at me, he says, 
You know, Mr. Day, sometimes I wonder myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's real management for you. That Cookie happens. management, no doubt. It. Thank you, Bob, very much for being here. Thank you. Bob Day, success story. We're going to take a break now. We'll be back in just a couple of moments with lots more stuff. Don't go away. Happy 40th to Channel 7 from all of us at Monday Night Football. Perhaps there's no more obvious phenomenon of change from one generation to another than the popular music of the day. Each decade, hey, we're having fun. I don't care what you're doing at home. Each decade finds a style to claim as its own. We can always blame the band. You know, when KJO TV was young, all the jukeboxes looked like this. And in 1949, it was they were playing the Third Man's theme. They were playing Mona Lisa, remember that King Cole, Bonaparte's Retreat, and band leaders like Stan Kenton. Gene Krupa were major, major stars. Air Hit Parade was a big on television, so were Perry Como, Frank Sinatra, and Bing Crosby. And on a more serious note, KGO-TV originated this series from the Richmond Auditorium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Standard Hour, presented for your enjoyment by the Standard Oil Company of California. In the 1960s, Channel 7 broadcast the San Francisco Ballet's Beauty and the Beast. We've always tried to put together some special musical Christmas present. I helped produce last year's show. It was called A Family Christmas. Beautiful! KGO produced special musical programs each winter and spring, featuring Bay Area students. This is from Young Sounds of Spring in 1978. We even had a production crew follow a San Jose song and dance troupe on tour south of the border. When international jazz legend Turk Murphy took his Yerba Buena jazz band to Carnegie Hall, of course we had to go along. You know, a lot of musicians earlier their stardom right directly to television. Like there's Liberace, there's Lawrence Welk, the Monkees, and the most mysterious mysteri materialized right here in the Channel 7 studio. As he became a star, he never uttered a single word. Not one. We bring you musical gems from near and far, blended into a pattern of glorious harmony. A program based on the universal language of music, it is our pleasure to present to you Corla Pandit. Some say his music spoke for him, but lots of women say it was the eyes. Now, for the very first time, certainly for any of us in this studio, we'll hear the voice of Corla Pandit. I gotta tell you, I used to sit, you know, and I wasn't looking at his beautiful eyes or anything other the music. We used to sit just fascinated. What do you think the quality was that you had just playing an organ, one individual, you went 15 minutes straight, no interruption of any kind, just playing. What is, what did that? Well, music sound is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. And I was attempting to communicate through music. We called it the universal language. Vibrate a string and all strings in tune, vibrate in unison, and so does the heart of man. So it that is. was my sphere of, of communicating through music, bringing people together through love and through music. So you obviously did it, because I don't know of anybody in those times who was a bigger star in early television than you were. And I just sit home mad, saying, well, gee, I could play a juice harp or something for 15 minutes. <laughs> and, but this guy did it. You were wonderful, right, Jack? 
And I understand, uh, Jack and I were talking earlier, that yeah. your, your son is a fine piano Yes, player. I have two sons, and they both play music, and they're into the keyboards and the new sounds, and we were sampling sounds, creating orchestral sounds from the very beginning, but now they have all the new samplers, but the still each one has to be true to its own form. Uh, each instrument should be representing a soul force. And that's what my concept was. Not too technical, not pre-recorded, but actually expressing love through the music. Two things I'd like to say. One is, after not hearing you all those years and hear your beautiful speaking voice, you wasted that for many years on television. It's nice to hear you speak for the very